my first thought was why? Why her? I mean, he'll be the first one to say his mom is everything to him. The doctor said it was the worst case that he had ever seen. From struggle comes strength. At a young age, my father introduced me to baseball. As a fifth grader, my Little League team went to the New Jersey State Finals. I played several sports as a child, but I decided to turn my attention to just one. A varsity volleyball coach actually saw me and told me to come out for a tournament that he was hosting while I was in eighth grade and didn't know what volleyball was. And then I remember that he said something about it when I was a freshman, so I decided to come out and try it. When I really realized that volleyball could have been a future for me, uh, my high school coach told me to go and try out for the North Jersey team, uh, Warren Sixpack. We got a lot of uh, letters from colleges that were interested in him. When we came out here, he just loved it. And that's when he said, Mom, I really want to come here. I actually met Julian, uh, he was at our nationals going into our freshman year of college. He's one of my best friends. It's, it's consistently grown throughout the years and, and it's, it's awesome, got to know him. At Ball State, my first two years were going great. We were winning matches, I was making new friends, I was successful in the classroom. It wasn't until my junior year when life started to spiral down. When I found out what it was, my first thought was why? Why her? It's one night I was just feeling weird and I kept doing this with my arms and there was like some numbness. I just, it was almost like, like when you get chills. That was probably two or three weeks before everything really went down. Typically it'll progress over a couple weeks period of time. So it tends to hit, you know, hit its peak about two weeks into the, per the disease progress. We were driving to North Carolina and I was still uncomfortable. I had some back pain. So I guess that's the beginning of when, okay, something's, something's going on here. It might start off with some initial weakness, maybe tingling in the toes that will eventually go up to the ankles and then the knees and can even go all the way up to, you know, involve the fingers and even the, you know, higher up on the body. My family took me to the ER four times and the one time that my oldest son took me, I couldn't walk. Guillain-Barre is itself relatively uncommon. In this particular case, the disease developed to the point where the patient went into a, essentially a coma. Now, I was in Orlando coaching uh, Montana for AAU Nationals and uh, my brother had called me. It was in the middle of the game. I didn't see my phone go off and uh, I had a couple voicemails from him. The thought definitely of losing another best friend of mine definitely went through my mind. And uh, when I did see her, I, I broke down immediately. It was, it was very hard to see someone that you love so much uh, in the state that she was. The doctor said it was the worst case that he had ever seen. So if somebody was, you know, in that kind of state for several months, it's going to be an extremely prolonged recovery time. He had voiced to me several times that, hey, you know, I really feel like I should be back there helping her out, you know, if that means quitting volleyball, stopping school, whatever. I think that was what ate at him the most. I know I couldn't go home all the time. I know I couldn't be there. It was frustrating knowing that I couldn't help. When you have to ventilate somebody for uh, a long period of time, you can no longer keep a tube down their throat because it starts to do damage to the structures there. Therefore, they have to put a tracheotomy in, which is a bypasses things through the throat and makes you know puts a hole in this area. The last time I had actually talked to her was in June when I was still in Orlando. That's the last time I talked to her until I think September. It was September 10th, 2013. I remember it well because it was the day. They took the trach out. They took the, uh, the pieces that were connecting to the ventilator off, removed that, and that allowed me to talk. My sister said, who do you want to call? I had a missed call from my aunt. I would called her back, and that was just a voice I, I thought I'd recognize, I didn't at first. He said, hello, and he thought it was my sister. Well, yeah, this is Aunt Amy, right? And I said, no, it's not. You, you know, know who, who this is? is? As soon as I, like, came to my mind, I was just, I was in tears. I was like, no way, like, this is just surreal. For the longest time, I put off feeling any anger. So yeah, I'm angry. I'm angry that this happened to me. Even though,
even though I've been able to get a lot of my independence back. It's such a contrast from what I was before I got sick. Knowing that she couldn't move at all, I just, I didn't think that she would recover fully. It seemed like once the doctor there said that I would never walk again, something clicked. I took my first steps on December 10th, so that was less than six months. Every time I hit a milestone, I cried. Just, I didn't think that she would recover fully. And seeing now that she has, it's, it's almost it's like a miracle, you know? It's, people always call her an angel. My mom's favorite flowers are roses. They symbolize not only our love, but a sign of inspiration. After she had originally gotten sick, you know, I was upset about it. And I was just trying to look for things that were meaningful, that would symbolize how passionate I am about her. I saw a quote, so I ended up just uh, looking for some design that I could do and where I could put it, and so I didn't get that for her. From struggle comes strength. February 8th, 2014, just two months after my mom took her first steps, my team traveled to Princeton near my hometown. We won the match in five, but that wasn't my focus. For the first time ever, my mom saw me play in a Ball State uniform. It was almost like a homecoming since we were back in New Jersey, so I also had a lot of friends and family there besides her. Um, so just being able to be on the court, still be in uniform with her, getting pictures, talking to everybody, it was just a great feeling. Throughout the rest of 2014, my mom continued to make progress that many described as a miracle. And there was one date she looked on both of our calendars, March 28, 2015, senior night. Knowing the person that really just uh, raised me, she taught me a lot of things in life that I still use today, uh, knowing that she's going to be out there on the court with me on such a big night. That's what we're talking about, how great it's going to be when I can actually walk him out onto the court. My mom traveled alone for the first time since the disease nearly ended her life to walk with me. It was extremely emotional seeing uh, him and his mom walk out together. I think it was almost like a, a culminating over the mountain type uh, experience for both of them. He's definitely been a positive influence for me. I love him, all my heart. <laughs>